Hello and welcome to our second live Tell Me More About session of this evening. For the next 20 minutes, we'll dive deeper into the topic of fully guided navigation with Professor Robert Haas. And remember, we are joined together with a very international crowd I just noticed in the chat. So we are live in this session. I will take your questions. So if you have a question on anything, make sure you submit them right away. And I'll read them out to Professor Robert Haas, who is now joining us live from Austria. Good evening and thank you for being with us, Robert. Where exactly are you tonight? Hi, Garrett. Boyer Wallenbecker from, from, from Vienna. I'm just sitting in my office in Vienna. And I've uh, been watching with, with, with Zoom and internet the interesting discussions and presentations we've had on in, in this evening already. Yes, well, we are glad that you're still able to join us tonight via this live connection. Maybe next time we are together here in the studio. You are a For professor sure. at the uh, Dental University in Vienna. You also run your own practice. Um, in our first Tell Me More About session tonight, we learned a lot about navigation, dynamics navigation specifically with Mike Block. So, Let's start this session with the very basis. What do you mean yeah. when you talk about fully guided navigation? Yeah, that's actually really a topic. Um, the dynamic navigation is actually always a fully guided uh, navigation. Uh, the, the static navigation, uh, you, may, you may differ in between. You may do all the steps fully guided, which means from planning until the end of the operation is done in a fully guided way or you can quit in between uh, and, and do only parts of the, of the implementations guided, that is partially guided or partially static guided. Now, um, I would like to, to, to give this, for instance, in a in, in, in patient case, if you like. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, because it shows you like uh, what, what's, what's, what's maybe happen when you're doing only partially guided. So this is a patient case where we had to restore the, the central incisor due to endodontic failure. And uh, initially we had to restore it with, some, with a rich preservation technique. And now if, if, you, if you lose this, the initial situation, you end up in a situation where you don't have to know where you place the Im implant uh, actually in a more aesthetic way. For that um, reason, we have to transfer some information of the patient's mouth into the into the into planning. So we copy the tees, the tools from which we want to have to restore, and then make landmarks. And uh, if we want to make a landmark in this single tools case, we have to head for this uh, red point you see in the presentation. This is where the where the tools, where the crown produce through the soft tissue. And we have, we know actually that we that we have to to place the implants in certain positions in order to get that landmark done, and that's the most important thing. So um, we are heading for this point, and in this case, the the the, the implantation was done part, partly guided, meaning we did only the two millimeter drill, and then we went on without having the guidance anymore. And if you carefully look, you will see that the that the drilling shifting more and more to the buckle side and uh, this was done in this case with an with some ceramic implant and if we if you look now at the final picture you see that the x-ray shows you that the that the ceramic implant has moved actually together with some parts of the of the heart tissue to the buckle side fortunately this was done in this case with with a ceramic implant and i strongly wonder if we had used an, an, an titanium implant the aesthetic result would have been the same. Uh, even after two years, I can show you the results. Uh, this is two year post-operative, so we have been very lucky. But unfortunately, this, this patient ended up in a situation we actually didn't intend to. Exactly, yeah. So the, the drill shifted, if I understand you correctly. Is this just a case? Is this uh, bad luck? Or does this happen more often? No, 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 no. It, actually, if you give up the fully guidance and uh, and for some reason um, this this enables to to the failures to occur, and it's given the literature as well. So, if we look at the literature at at, at the uh, meta analysis, and there is one done in 2018 by a group which covers 34 articles, and it's clearly written that fully guided implant surgery achieves greater accuracy than the half guided ones. 
So um, these are analyses or, or articles analyzing uh, Kandava studies and clinical studies and in vitro studies, and there are huge differences in between. So let's look at the articles that covers only clinical cases and there the randomized control trials. And there's one very, very recently published in the October issue of the clinical oral implant research, which covers 14 randomized control trials, which proved that, that there has been lower angulation, uh, lower coronal and epithelial de deviation when you're using a static computer-aided implant placement compared to the freehand implant placement. And if you look at the partial uh, angular deviation, then um, the static, the, to the fully guided proves much better with angular deviation failure compared to the partially guided um, um, protocol. So, um, so if I sure understand you correctly, control. Robert, you create a static guide together with a dynamic navigation tool. Yes, yes, that's very important because the, 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 the guidance enables us very much to not only plan for the hard tissue, we're planning for the soft tissue as ah. well and, act, and actually for the aesthetic of the patient. This is uttermost important for the single tooth cases, but for, for the more complex cases as well. And uh, we have to, to, to see the, 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 the possibilities of this, of this technique and we have to use it. Exactly. Now, what other factors are influencing the accuracy of this fully guided implementation? Can you show us? Yes, I'm showing you another slide from, from, the, from the literature. And uh, there are some factors significantly influence the accuracy. So it's first of all, is implant lengths. The shorter the implants are, the more increased is angu angular deviation. Uh, if you're placing implants in the maxilla, uh, you have less deviation compared to, to the mandible. If you have unrestored teeth, um, it's the more unrestored teeth you have, the less uh, accurate is, is, is the guidance. And um, 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 the type of guidance, if it's teeth supported or mucosa supported, is of next important. And there was a study done by Raiko Guelardo in 2017, where um, um, Luca Cordaro, the upcoming president of the EAO, was the senior author. And in this meta-analysis, they could even show that the that surprisingly the the the, the bone-supported uh, guidance had less accuracy than the T's or even the mucosa-supported one. So that's actually very astonishing to my to my yeah, opinion. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and the the cortical bone, the the thicker the cortical bone, the more increased deviation you have. So that's actually yes, you can imagine that. The implant location, the more distally you want to place the implants in the guided and static guidance, the more increased are the deviations. This is due to the fact that you can, cannot handle with accuracy in the, in the posterior, especially in posterior mandible. It might be able to, to place implants guided, fully guided in the maxilla, but please don't try it in the mandible when, when the opposite addition is still in the mouse. You, you most probably end up in, in, in some, some troubles. And the last one is the guided sleeve height and, and the drilling distance. So um, these are, are very um, important things. The, the more you are to the bone, to the place you want to place your implants, the more accurate is, is, is it uh, for placing the implant. Can you explain a little bit more about that last point? What is meant with this guided sleeve height and the drilling distance in this case? Yeah, yeah, this is very important because if you look at the literature, uh, you won't see very, very much um, um, literature going with the guidance, with the fully guidance or partial guidance when you're heading for the, for the immediate implantation. So why is this? Because uh, if you make uh, sleeves uh, guidance for the, for the immediate implantation, you end up with the, with the sleeve far away, ages away from the bone. So let me let me give you this in a in a more um, um, schematic drawing. Yep. So if if you go to an oblique surface with a drill, the drill will be shifted to the to the buckle side. This is due to the fact that it's not still it's not very tightly secured in the, in the sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, at, at such a sleeve, you see the movement that is able that gives the drill able for movement. So the, the, the drill will shift to the buckle side, which leads especially to angular deviation, but always shifting as well to the buckle side, the whole, the, the whole implant side. So uh, 
please be careful when you're doing the, 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 the guidance in immediate implantation. I don't know if this is a, a really good advice to do. Exactly. Well, that is very, very clear advice. Now, it seems that so far you've been focusing on guided implementation, but does this mean the same as the guided navigation that we talk about in the title of this session? Yes, yes, and that's the, the next huge difference, because if you use the, all, all the abilities of, of, of this technique, it enables us you not to just place the implants in the bone, it enables us to plan all the case, the patient case. And um, you, 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 can, uh, you can look at every single wishes of the patients, every need of the patient that is, that is uh, important. Let's consider it what is navigation in the car. You, you, have, to use, you have to know two, two points, two mm -hmm. coordinates. The one is where you're standing and the other is where you're heading for. And um, it's the same with the patient. So you see the patient, you see the case, how, how is the patient in mouse? What's his problem? And what do we want to treat? Yeah. And where do you want to end up? And let me just give you an, an, what I'm meaning in a an, in an next patient case, please. Yeah, please, um, because I'm, I'm still trying to understand how it differs from the dynamic navigation tooling that we just saw with Mike Block. Yeah, yeah, because the dynamic uh, the, the, the dynamic navigation just gives you the possibility to 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 see the accurate situation like it is now. But yeah. with the static dynamic uh, static navigation, we can plan the patient from beginning to where we want the patient to end up. So this is a patient case with a severe atrophy in the maxilla. You see, there's almost no bone actually nowhere with huge. Um, um, uh, a huge area covering the the um, um, the sinus maxillaris, mm -hmm. and if you look at the patient's face, you see the big difference. The actual that's a universe in between the maxilla and the mandible, which you have to to to, to treat as well, not only to place implants to fix something. So we want to treat the face of the patient, and uh, therefore we can look where do we want to end up. And when we want to end up, we look at the position of the implant and uh, what, where do we have to augment, where do we have to place some material in order to place finally the implants. So if you look at this picture, you see that we only plant the, the implants where we wanted to have them and then augment in that direction. So in that case, we used um, um, allogenetic uh, prefabricated um, grafts uh, where we, where we in the position where we in finally wanted to place the implant. So when we go for the, for the patient again, we first do the a sinus lift together with uh, implants in order to have some, some structure to use in between for the, for, for the, for the treatment for the patient because uh, building up in a vertical plane is always a very, very difficult way and you have to take away all the pressure from the soft tissue. Yep. So we decided in that in that patient to make the sinus lift first and place implants and let them heal. Now after healing, we we uh, uncovered the the implants, um, the posterior implants one, and place the the prefabricated bone blocks all together. Now when 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 suturing, you have to take away all the all the pressure, and you can fix the provisional restoration. Uh, onto the distal implants in order to, to protect everything underneath. And it helps the patients to, to maintain his, his daily uh, needs uh, when going through this difficult procedure. And the second one is that when planning now, when doing the final planning, we have a very accurate position to place our, our, our guidance afterwards in exact that position that we have been wanting to place the implants. So you can fix the, the, the guidance on, onto the primary placed implants and you're very, very accurate. Now, this is the very tricky final result after immediate um, uh, loading of the implants with a, with a two type supper structure. I don't want to go into details for that, but the patient's was actually restored. His face was restored, her face was restored. So when you look before and after, you see that, the, that where we wanted to go and where we reached the goal, we were very happy, and this, uh, this is the, 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 the challenging and, and, and the part that gives you, that enables you with, with, the, with, the, with the total guidance, with total static guidance, actually. Exactly. It's a, it's a more 
Fully approach. That's why it's called, I guess, the fully guided navigation approach. Now, Robert, we have time for one audience question, but I do want to acknowledge it. It's Pinar Cevik, who's joining us from Turkey, and he's referring to something that we Hi. already briefly uh, touched on. But hey, the game here is accuracy. He's saying if boats, and I think you don't agree with him, but if boats, static and dynamic guided surgery provides similar accuracy regarding implant position, which one of the two do you prefer and mainly why? But we only have one minute for that answer, Robert. So make it strong. Right now, the, the static navigation, because the dynamic navigation is, you, you operate on the screen and the patient lies ages away. And it's very difficult. So once we do not have uh, eyeglasses, where we have both in a, in a super light way, uh, I, I would actually recommend to wait. You would wait. But the, the question yes, is about the using... accuracy, and, and uh, because that is the game. So would you say, I would wait because my accuracy of the uh, uh, fully guided navigation is much better than the dynamic solution? No, no. When you look at the literature, and Michael has already uh, pointed that out, the accuracy of both methods are quite equal. The, the okay. totally guided and the, and the dynamic guided, they are quite equal. Quite similar. All right. Well, thank you very much, Pinar, for submitting the question live. Thank you very much, uh, Robert Haas, joining us uh, from Vienna, um, and for this interesting insight on how you do this fully guided navigation.